And welcome, everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for the return of Esper Hero. That's right, we haven't seen Esper Hero too much in the standard metagame, but maybe it's time to bring it back. Uh, one thing that this deck, um, you know, this deck has like really good interaction, a whole lot of multicolor spells. Of course, the reason why it's called Esper Hero, for those of y'all that remember this deck uh, last format, before rotation is because it's based around hero of precinct one and casting a bunch of multicolor spells the thing is this deck doesn't interact with planeswalkers very well um you can play planeswalker removal you can play you know like murderous rider for example there um and that's why but the you know, immerse rider is not a multicolor spell but that's kind of why it, it struggled against uh oko you know like you didn't have an a, you know it's kind of hard to like really get everything down like what oko was trying to do but maybe with our metagame that's full of food and fires decks, this could be something that could uh, that could be like the way to go. You know, like we have Dispark, which is awesome against the fires decks. You got Mortify to be able to destroy enchantments or creatures at instant speed. There's a lot of like Rakdos aggro decks in the format too. And, you know, we have good anti-aggro cards with like Othakaya and Teferi bouncing Othakaya, um, Bell Haunt and Elite Guard Mage both gaining life. Um, then, you know, we have other removal, Tyrant Scorn, Drown in the Lock can be some removal spells for us. Um, Time Wipe works really well with this deck, of course, picking up these four drops for picking up Hero if you're behind. Um, and then, of course, we have this really over-the-top card of Bola Citadel that can just go crazy with this deck with all the, the different life gain and everything, too. All right, so this deck has just tons of really good stuff. Our mana is pretty rough. You can see we're playing three Dismal Backwaters, a couple Tranquil Coves, the four Temple of Silences. So that's a lot of tap lands. So the mana is pretty rough with three colors here. Lots and lots of tap lands because we have so much different color requirements. You know, trying to cast, you know, white, white, BB and, you know, all these UB spells and all these white, black spells. It's mana is pretty tough. That's, that's definitely a downside, but... Um, not having to worry about, you know, the green planeswalkers as much. And people just aren't playing as many planeswalkers in general right now. Um, sideboard, you know, have some Kayas for the Witches Oven decks, some Unmoored Egos for like your slower control decks, um, an Ethereal Absolution for the cat decks, make their, you know, make sure they can't keep on bringing back Cauldrons Familiar over and over. An extra Legion's End in there. Just a lot of good stuff in this deck. So, um, no room for a couple of Thieves of Sanity. There could be some sideboard Thieves of Sanity. Could be doing that instead of like, you know, instead of these two draw or three mana cards, you could definitely have Thief of Sanities there. Um, if you want that for a sideboard card. <clears throat> um, Deafening Clarion is, is, you know, obviously a really big part of all these just guy fires decks and that's that's something that we gotta have to we're gonna have to watch out for with hero of precinct one is kind of watch out for uh deafening clarion but you know we do have the thought erasures that can help protect but yeah we'll, we'll play these out but yeah maybe cyborg thief of sanity that could be somewhere to go um but we're gonna be playing about probably about four matches in ranked the standard matches take a little longer so we'll probably play about four matches in ranked here So let's see how, let's see how we do with Esper Hero. Mana looks really rough. What do I got for lands over here? Twenty-five. That's probably okay. We got lots and lots of two and three mana spells. Maybe I'm supposed to just put back the Drown in the Lock. This is really a Drown in the Lock's really a late game card. Not really an early game card. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, we're not really risking our, our rank. We're playing a good deck here. And, you know, you have to finish in the top. Uh, you do have to finish in the top uh, 1,200 to get qualified for the next Mythic Championship qualifier. But I did last month, so I'm already qualified for the next one. So, so basically... There's not really any risk of losing rank. 
I do wish I would have... I only have one card in the graveyard. I do wish I would have just gotten rid of the... other drown in the lock and played another Othakaya now. Ow. <laughs> I, I didn't, Guru. So they don't, they're not playing anything, huh? Not even this Bone Crusher Giant? Yeah, get rid of that dummy's ambush. Boo, don't have another one. Do they not Do not do they not realize they can just play this bone crusher giant? I guess they don't want to because of a sweeper. They don't really want to play it because of a sweeper, I guess. If I knew for sure I was going to have five mana next turn, maybe I just take that and then I pick up my elite guard mage with the time wipe. But I just don't know that I'm going to have that mana next turn. Oh, that was a good thought, Rager. So, you know, we'll be using this to pick up the Othakaya to kill something else and gain three life again. Perfect. Right on schedule. Trust me. I that was right on schedule. You are correct. Time Raveler. I've done the hero thing before. <laughs> the fairy's never correct. Stop. I've got time. Um, I'm just gonna pass. Obviously, just don't need to spend this extra life. Let's try this. Sorry, I'm late. This might be a bad idea. We're going through a whole lot of lands. Right, that's pretty good. Well, that worked out. I'll protect you. Well, that worked out. <laughs> oh no, that didn't work out. <laughs> well, that didn't pan out. Oh, I'm supposed to say pan out. <laughs> hey, regular elf, welcome to the channel. Thanks for coming over from YouTube. All right, I'm giving. I'm giving a. I'm giving my computer a little bit of time to quit this lag. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> he didn't join in on the the best time at regular elf because of this lag here, but um No, I am not making Of course happy to have you here. Um we lose one life to play Belhaunt, sure. Belhaunt's a great one to be able to bounce and replay for some more life as well. That's more like it. Alright, let's bounce the guard mage, replay the guard mage, draw this thought erasure. So, I mean, I could have just played the thought erasure off the top for life total, but we just don't have to, to pay the life now. Ah, that would have been the scariest card to see also. Because that thing has hexproof on their turn, they get to attach Ember Cleave to it. More of these. Oh, I didn't take up Teferi though. Right, so I don't get to Thought Erasure them during their turn. Right. Alright, there we go. I'm used to it. It's better if you watch at the two times speed. The lag goes away faster. <laughs> That's true. Hopefully this this weekend though. Planning on buying a new computer this weekend, and then hopefully buy. And then you know it takes some time to ship, and then I have to build it, and then the weekend after. Hopefully by then we'll have it all ready to go. All right. So time wipe, dispark, legions end. Those all seem like reasonable cards to be playing. Question mark. Do I need all these disparks? That's a lot of disparks. Oh yeah, I probably had the ten permanents for the win there. That's probably true. Yay! Hey, thanks for the bits there, regular elf. Cheers. Buying things around this time is bad, but it's, aren't they supposed to have like the Good Friday sales? And Cyber Monday and stuff like that? Is Thought Erasure not that great? That seems weird to cut Thought Erasure. It really wasn't that good for us though. Maybe I'll just go down to one Citadel. Let's go down to one Citadel. Just watch an ad. Well, thank you so much. You're now the bit leader for the week. You would always cut Thought Razor on the draw against aggro. Always. That includes a lot of the time. Cinder vines. That's going to do some damage to me. I do have
I do have some mortifies to kill those. I have, what, three mortifies? And also Teferi Bounce plus Thought Erasure. Yeah, that's definitely a good candidate if you don't know what to cut. I like it. Of course, I can use the Tyrant Scorn to bounce my own Bell Hunt. Make them discard more, me gain more life. Same with the fairy. Or you just counter it with Drown in the Lock. I'm known for my excellent timing. There goes nothing. We're going to try to outrace our opponent with these bell haunts. The race is looking good for us right now. <laughs> Basilica bell haunt looks like the ghost of Christmas yet to come. Yeah, I was, I was, yep, Ryzen, yeah, I was planning on getting Ryzen PC. Well, that's a good, good draw for them over there. It's going to turn the Pell Collector into a 3-3 now. whatever. Thought Razors have not been good. <laughs> Alright, and that should be should be lethal. It looks like we're picking up a first win. Basilica Bell Hunt. Doing the dirty work. All that attacking. Alright, we're one and now. That's Mozart, thank you so much.
All right, so we got five lands, a hero, and a thought erasure. We'll go ahead and give this one a try. Let's lead with the Tranquil Cove. So we have Tranquil Cove, Swamp, and Thought Erasure. Um, obviously playing the hero first would be ideal. Emberth Shieldbreaker, huh? All right, let's give it a try. Let's try to play hero first. It kind of feels like they have shock if they just led with Basic Mountain, though. The may like maybe I'm supposed to be waiting on this going thought erasure, waiting till I can double spell, you know, like have four or five mana and drop hero and then you know hero plus mortify or hero plus another spell on turn four. Kind of thing. Hmm. Double Ember Cleave. All right, we'll figure out. We got to find something to do with these ember cleaves. That's not bad. And of course, we can just kill all the creatures, <clears throat> and then we don't have to worry about ember cleave. One Ember Cleave down. Darn. That's just going to die. That was not a good attack. I want to save Drown in the Lock to be able to counter stuff. But I just want to get that out of here so if they draw another one of these, they don't get to... Uh, another Adventure Creatures, they don't get to draw a card. But they have... I'm putting my shields down for one turn. Seemed like a perf perfectly reasonable turn to have the shields down. They didn't just activate the castle to do an extra point of damage to me, though. But I guess it probably doesn't really matter too much right now. A mana rock is a is usually an artifact that produces mana. Think a chromatic lantern kind of card. If you know that one, Mindstone. So just yeah, an artifact that produces mana. That's a mana rock. All right, so Gruel Adventures. I am worried about Vivian. All right, so we're down to, we'll just play two Thought Erasure, the one Citadel. So basically playing an extra to Spark. I think last time I played two to Spark, we'll play an extra to Spark to be able to exile Vivian and cut a Thought Erasure. Could also just play Vetoes. We'll just do this though. Obviously to Spark exiles Ember Cleave as well. 
Yeah, Soul Ring, that's probably the quintessential mana rock. Poor Citadel, all the way down to the bottom. No, we're not, we know we're never going to draw the Citadel now. Yeah, we definitely tap Citadel with this deck, especially because of Hero of Precinct 1. You know, Hero of Precinct 1 can make a bunch of tokens for us and um, and allow us to activate Citadel. No shuffles, nope. Not playing any Fable Passage. So unless my opponent has me shuffle my library. kind of pretty like this is just kind of awkward with the hero precinct one right now though See if we can get four cards into the graveyard. That's the second card. <laughs> the dragon whelp? Abomination, isn't it? Look at, look at a little dragon whelp. Yeah. That's a good one. You like the fox to the cat? They have an Ember Cleave. That would be kind of rough for me. They could definitely just have more questing beasts in hand. Unfortunately, it's exiled. It like, doesn't count towards Drown in the Lock. I do you have more questing beasts? I need to get one more card in their graveyard. Pretty good way to get a card in the graveyard, I guess.
Obviously, we're going to pick up Elite Guard Mage. Wow, not even scared of Othakaya. So that's why I didn't mind attacking with the hero, because we're going to be picking up Elite Guard Mage to gain us more life draws and another card. <laughs> You're a great Esper player. Just draw the card that you need. That is the thing to do with Esper. Uh, I cannot counter Embercleave, unfortunately. I only have four cards over there. I could just kill a Fervent Champion right now. Then they don't get to Embercleave. I don't think that's what I do, though. Mm. So my best play against specifically Embercleave this turn, it's kind of my worst play against everything else, though. Wasting a Drown in the Lock. And it's my only card in hand. Well, it looks like they do have specifically Embercleave this turn. Well, unfortunately. Oh. Alright, that's fine. Even better. We got to kill a Fervent Champion and a Bone Crusher Giant. Even better. Alright, so they can activate Embereth now. So yeah, if I block with Guard Mage, they just activate Umbreath. It's either block with Hero or not to block at all and take three. We'll, we'll live dangerously. We'll not block. Duh, bears. Thank you so much for that, Risa. Da bears. Are y'all picking up a Are y'all picking up a win this Thanksgiving? I know my responsibility. Against the Lions? What do you think? I How don't. confident are you this weekend? I would think that the Browns not the Bra sorry the Bears I would think that the Bears defense would just dominate against a you know, maybe a third string quarterback for the Lions. <laughs> You'd say about a four for how confident you are. Oh no. Let's try this. I know everybody in Chicago has been really upset with their offense. And coaching. And there we go. Storm getting the, the gifted sub. Thank you so much there, Boot.
Animander with that tier one sub. Thank you so much, Animander. Welcome back. Hmm. Well, they just so they just activated Nullhide Ferox for no reason. Protect you. So basically, I'm going to be saving Drown and Lock to counter an Ember Cleave, because that's like the only thing that kills me now. All right, so Othakaya on them turns this into a two-turn two clock. Upstairs with the Guard Mages. So now they'll be lethal next turn. We have a counter spell for anything my opponent can draw. So we should have this on lockdown. Oh, right. They can't em Ember Cleave at instant speed because of the Teferi. Oh, I can't counter that thing. That thing costs nine. Bleh. All right. Counter that. Don't let them draw another card. It's still lethal. Um, I can just, you know, attack around them. Or I can bounce the Othakaya. I can do both. Yeah. So we're good. All right, 2-0. This deck has looked really good so far. We've played against two Gruul decks, though. We'll see if we play against a different type of deck. But so far against Gruul, our, our deck seems awesome. <laughs> yeah, Stormy said that we would be risking our rank. We're ranking up. We're in the double digits. All right, Ollie always likes to bring the spice. So we need a blue mana, but we got the temples to look for it and we're on the draw. This doesn't really look like the spice. Natural Asper Player. Uh, these cards are going to be difficult to deal with. So going with the team or adventures. Not just Simic. We just have to kill that thing to make it more difficult to play the Great Henge. I'm going to need more lands. This isn't a bad one. Ow. 
Ow, ow, ow. All right, so there goes the Great Henge. That's fine. I just need more blue mana, don't I? Oh, that hurts. Double Rampant Growth. That's a really strong card. isn't a fight you can win. Here goes nothing. That beanstalk giant was a great draw. Don't really have a plan here. For double Fay of Wishes. So I could have countered the fling, but then they have expansion that, that just copies the fling. So I couldn't, but obviously they just drew a land and you know I was I was very dead to that explosion unless we could find a counter spell. All right, so this is gonna be kind of a tough matchup. The adventures do a good job of, of uh, uh, do a good job of grinding. So I definitely want these Nar sets. I want all these Dovin's vetoes, as many vetoes as possible. Hmm. Ego may not be that bad here for Fay of Wishes. Dispar can get rid of the Great Henge and Beanstalk Giant. Don't have good stuff for Lucky Clover. Well, they they uh, they could also. I mean, they could they can expansion my my Drown in the Lock and have my Drown in the Lock counter my original Drown in the Lock. Do a donation deck to have me do a draft. Um, I'm not sure there. This is too many cards, obviously. All right, I gotta focus in here. What are we taking out? Hmm. I 
They don't go this crazy. Um, no, no, that that card's really good. I gotta cut stuff. I'm I, I kind of ran out of time. I I need to focus on sideboarding more. There, I just ran out of time. That was. That was not, not a good sideboard plan by me, obviously. We'll see how it works out. Um, donation. So donation deck to do a draft? Probably not. No, probably not. I just don't think that there's just a whole lot of people too interested in the. Uh, and you're like watching all the the draft games and everything. Trust me, you'll thank. Oh, I've done the hero thing before. more like it so now I don't think yeah I don't think I'll do the donation deck for a draft this one's looking very good for Ollie here I don't know if we'll be able to get this We'll have to get pretty lucky with Citadel. Because obviously that's that's the only card I have. Obviously. That's such a good combination. Lucky Clover, Beanstalk Giant. That's so powerful. Wow. Good game. Could have done the three upstairs. That's what I was kind of debating on. Yeah, because now, I mean, now they just have infinite mana. And it's over. That's just a, an amazing hand there, just drawing only four lands and, and all those and just using the Beanstalk Giants with the Lucky Clovers to get all, all your lands out. Well, I was over here drawing nine lands. GG's. I did, I just did really poor sideboarding. I really need to focus more on that sideboarding. I think maybe I should have brought in Ego for, um, for Fae of Wishes. All right, so we're two and one. Stroud and the Locks have been kind of up and down. They're awesome in the late game, but looking at them in the opening hands, they haven't been so good in the... Um, they haven't been so good. Ollie's deck was called Flick the Bean. 
Eh. I mean, that's that's a pretty pretty normal deck. Good. That's good, Storm. We may be playing against that deck again here. So yeah, the Drown Lock. Drown Lock does kill a token at least. This looks more like Gruul though. There's not really any punishment for waiting anymore. Like, there's no Veil of Summer. They just go Island. <laughs> Stubborn Denial. Counterspell. Alright, Cure being cool. This gargoyle is going to help me turn on my Drown the Lock. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really play EDH myself. But if you don't, uh, if you're looking for like EDH help, if you don't know the site edhrec.com. Yeah, I'm not sponsored, obviously, but just that that website is is the best EDH website and resource that I know of. It is awesome. You can find lots of ideas of different cards and see a lot of different EDH decks and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to need that one, even though I don't have the mana yet. I'm going to need that. Let's slow this down. I've got time. All right, good. They let me draw it instead of milling it over. Do you think, like, they... Yeah, they're just mill now. So like that's that's just them not really paying attention. If you see somebody scry to the top and you know you're just gonna make them mill anyway, and they they do something, they're gonna draw the card. They should have just activated the the gargoyle there and milled that card over after I scryed it to the top. Pretty cool looking deck here though that my opponent's playing. about this Kiora. <clears throat> Kiora's a tough one for me. I talked about before how I wasn't really playing stuff for cheap Planeswalkers. Like, I don't really have Planeswalker removal. So they could get back Cavalier of Flame or Hydroid Krasis. If I time wipe.
she here? Three, four, five, six, seven. This thing, eight. It's a pretty big crisis. <laughs> yeah, Bullet Citadel is a messed up card. Okay, the Gargoyle will not block. I guess I should have read that card closer. Oh, right. They just get that thing. Whoops. I was focused on Hydroid Crisis. They obviously just get this thing that's going to kill me. Ugh, can't make mistakes like that. I'll kill you. So Gargoyle needs the four cards to block, not the four cards to attack. They need the seven cards over there to attack. All right, perfect to spark matchup. Um, not a bad Kaya matchup. Kiora is just kind of a problem. I guess I can have these Narsets to, to try to slow down Kiora. Um, yeah, Legion's End gets rid of Gargoyle, but I don't think that's really anything I'm too worried about. We got all of our other removal that can also hit Gargoyle. I mean, I guess we don't have, like, a ton of removal that hits it. I guess, to be honest. Oh, Kaya doesn't really kill their large creatures. Obviously, Othakaya makes my Citadel a lot better, though. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want Kaya to eat their graveyard. It's it's really good against Cavalier of Thorns, but I think I'm just going to try to do the, the Disparks instead. I'm going to play some Vetoes for, like, Kiora and Mass Manipulation and stuff like that. So I kind of want to play all of these. Guard Mage and Bell Hunter are a little small for what they got going on. And trim these Ravelers. This hand could not work out. Oh, with Absolute, yeah, Absolution definitely too slow for getting rid of the graveyard. And the creatures are too big for the plus one, minus one to matter. Why do you have to be in my opener all the time, John? The lock? Can, can I just draw you in the late game? I don't want you right now. Same with you, Citadel. I want to draw you two later on. No, they, their five power creatures would still trigger off Ethereal Absolution. Or sorry, would still trigger Kior. Like even if we have Ethereal Absolution in play, uh, their five power triggers would still, their five power creatures would still trigger. If there was four power, they would not trigger. Four power creatures would not trigger. The four powers would be would turn into threes. Kiora needs four or bigger. Ugh. Opponent does have Kiora, unfortunately.
course, they still have four cards in hand, so they can still get to block. Got rid of a black source. One drop ripples and grows. Wow, that's a killer. That's a good one. All right, so they still have. So they didn't activate Gargoyle because I didn't, I wasn't able to play this card, so they're probably thinking it's a land. Yeah, my opponent can block. They had four cards in hand. It can block. If you have four cards in hand, it can block. All right, so I got really punished for sideboarding out Legion's End. If we would have had Legion's End instead of Drown the Lock for these, they wouldn't have been able to just slam the Great Henge. They wouldn't have had all this mana. No, I want to cast that Thought Erasure. Okay. If I, if I draw Teferi, I can bounce the Citadel back to my hand. But yeah, this this is a really nice combo of having gargoyles with Citadel. Obviously, they get to manipulate the top of their library. Yeah, it's just it's tough, right? Like Legion's End was would have only hit one creature in their deck, and it's I don't feel bad cutting it. It's just unfortunate how I I did cut it, and then this game it would have been like one of my most important possible cards. So that's it's just unfortunate how the game played out. Uh, sure, Crisis. Um, yeah, I, I guess it would have done Crisis too. All right, let's play one more. These games haven't taken as long. We got time for one more. No, I would I would expect Quasi Duplicate to be a better card. Yeah, I'm not sure why they're playing re Repudiate Replicate over Quasi Duplicate because when you're playing Cavalier of Thorns and you're you're milling and you're playing Castle Vantress, you're milling the quasi duplicate you could still cast from the graveyard. So I would I would think that would be better. Oh, for Lotus Field. Okay, that makes sense. So they want to counter the Lotus Field ability that makes them sacrifice. That's right.
Alright, back to another green deck. Alright, we both got the double two drop. Start. Now they're going to have a lot of mana. I don't really want to trade my hero precinct ones for paradise druids. It's going to take a little bit of removal to get rid of that thing. Basically, it just takes two removal spells. All right, we're going to need to go really wide here. My opponent's going to be going tall. We're going to need to go wide. Ugh, that's not the card I want to see at all. That card's so good. I've been definitely going over the top of opponents Behold, recently with Great Henge as well. Power. Can't complain too much. Great Henge is just awesome. Meaning if I get time wipe, they still have Nissa and the Great Henge and four cards. I have four lands. I can cast a Bell Haunt. Can we... Uh, 
Maybe turn into Esper Control. So I gotta win the game somehow, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. We'll we'll see how we do here. Sixty two. All right, let's see how we do. All three decks that we struggled with though, are, are basically the same thing. I mean, the two decks that we beat were basically the same thing. You know, we beat two gruel creature decks, and we've lost to three decks that are just completely designed on going way over the top, three great henge decks. They're just designed to, to make tons of mana and, and tons of card advantage with the great henge. Like that's just go over the top of us. Didn't play against the two big decks in the format with uh, food or, or fires, unfortunately. Didn't get those tests. Oh, come on. Not, not a land? Well, last game we got stuck on two lands. This one, three. Sorry, last time three, this time two. Yay. We got to land. Okay. Um, could have egoed Nyssa. I was thinking about doing that. Uh, I did have Nyssa. I protect that which cannot protect itself. The land fights for us. Well, well, I have four to sparks. We're going to have to draw to spark. Wish I would have just taken the Nissas. I just have the two feasting troll king. Obviously, we were just like dead if they played a crisis, so we just get rid of the crisis. Yeah, you can't. You cannot exile lands with Kaya. That would be way too good if you could exile lands. It's you can non-land permanent. We need to draw another white source for time wipe. Like right now. That questing beast obviously puts a lot of pressure on us. Yeah, if you if you could just play Kaya and start exiling their lands, that would be just way too good. No land. All right, I need to ego say Nissa on that turn three.
Okay, so finished up two and three with Esper Hero. Just had uh, had two, you know, two tails of the deck. Played against a couple of, of Gruul aggro decks, and our deck looked awesome, and everything was good. And then we played three um, green big mana decks that just went way over the top. And, you know, their cards are just much more powerful than ours, and uh, we got destroyed in all of those games. Um, I don't think that... I mean, Esper Hero is just not... Like, that's that's just how you beat Esper Hero. I, we're not really playing this deck trying to beat those kind of decks. The, those aren't really like the most popular decks right now. Um, you know, I wish we would have been playing against uh, the Jeskai Fires and the food decks and seeing how we could have done against those. But if if you're going to see a whole lot of like the really you know big mana green decks, this is not really where you want to be. Um, Dispark is a great card to help out in those scenarios, but you can only play four to sparks and we weren't drawing them. But all right, that's Esper hero. So I un unfortunately didn't learn a whole lot, which that's always what you want to be doing is learning. Didn't learn a whole lot. Had three bad matchups that happens. All right, if you're watching on YouTube, though, hope you hit that like button over there. And, of course, feel free to leave comments um, as well. And, uh, yeah, mur need Murderous Riders. I mean, we talked about that before. There's just not really not really very many decks playing Planeswalkers. We just happened to play against a couple there at the end. Um, and, like I said, we had the Disparks for them. But I don't... I mean, yeah, you can definitely play Murderous Rider. I mean, you can also... I mean, I just didn't want to with wanting to go with this hero version with, you know, Hero Citadel and, and stuff like that. But, you know, if we're playing normal Esper Control, of course, we would be playing them. Um, but, yeah, that's that's it here for Esper Hero. Uh, again, if you're uh, – for those of y'all on YouTube, I hope you check out the Patreon page as well. Uh, if you'd like to help support my videos, it's just $3 a month. Um, you, you don't get charged right away. You only get charged the first of the month if you sign up. Um, you can, uh, it's basically just for supporting my, my videos, but then also I writing, uh, different articles over there that you can, uh, read, I'm writing about two articles a week, um, over there on Patreon. Uh, the one for today was a song of food and fire and talked about how the food and the fire decks dominated the standard PTQ this past weekend and what to do about it. All right. But anyway, that's it here for Esper Hero. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.